Hi everybody, this is Morgan. So we're going to be talking about chemical equilibrium in our new chapter. You should be on the lecture outline that says Unit 10 Equilibrium, starting at page number one. Now, chemical equilibrium. Chemical reactions reach a state of dynamic equilibrium in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal and there is no net change in the composition of the equilibrium mixture. So basically, we're defining chemical equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay? So I have an example here. Carbon monoxide gas and water gas form an equilibrium with CO2 gas and H2 gas. Now graphically, we're going to look at what this would look like. So on the x-axis, we'll put time, and on the y-axis, we're going to put rate. So this curve right here represents the rate of the forward reaction. Starts off strong, slows down, eventually quits changing. It's not equal to zero. This is a non-zero value, okay? But it's not changing anymore. Now the rate of the reverse reaction starts at zero, increases, and eventually becomes equal with the forward reaction. So when the rate of the reverse reaction and the forward reaction become equal, which are basically at this point, that is the point when equilibrium is attained in the system. Okay? Please be aware that these are reaction rates. They're not concentrations. Let's do another graph where we talk about concentrations. We're going to put time here, and we're going to put concentration. We're going to use molarities, square brackets indicating molarities. Now, for this reaction, what happens is the concentration of CO decreases. That's also equal to the concentration of H2O, so one-to-one -one ratio. They decrease and they eventually quit changing, non-zero value. Now, the rates of the products increase. CO2, which would be equal to H2. Now, when they quit changing, which is basically right here, equilibrium is achieved. Now, it's important to point something out here. In this specific example, the rate, I'm sorry, the concentration of the product ended up higher than the concentration of the reactant. Now, I could have done it the other way also. I could have had this line above and this line below, and that's perfectly fine. What I've not encountered, I'm not saying it's impossible, what I've not encountered is when these concentrations are actually going to be equal to each other. Okay? So, depending upon the position of the equilibrium, whether it favors the products more or the reactants more, you could end up having more product, you could end up having more reactant, but it's highly unlikely that you're going to have the same amount of both. Okay? So that's our basic definition for equilibrium. The rate of the forward reaction will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. All right, now, we're gonna go on to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. When a system at equilibrium is subjected to a stress, the equilibrium will shift to relieve the stress. So, what are stresses? These will be things like changes in concentration, pressure, volume, temperature, etc., etc. Those things can affect the position of an equilibrium. Now, I'm going to post some videos that you can, uh, I'll do it on school sheet, that you can look at. But this demonstration, I don't have a video of me doing these. I've got to record all those when we get back in the building. We're going to have two beakers of water, and 
one will be quite hot and one will be quite cold. And when we stick test tubes that contain this mixture in, the one that goes in the hot water versus the one that goes in the cold water, the one in the hot water becomes very dark, dark blue and kind of a light pink for the one in the cold water. Now what this is telling me is that heat is pushing me more towards this side of the equilibrium where the COCl2 minus is the blue color. Okay, So that means energy is a reactant the way this is written. When I put it in cold water and energy would be removed, it favors the pink side. If I put it in hot water, I'm feeding the forward reaction, okay? Because I'm adding the reactant, the energy, and getting more of that substance. One of the cool things I do with this is that after we set it up, when we run it for five minutes and you see the dark blue and the pink, I just switch the test tubes between the two beakers. And five minutes later, the dark blue one is suddenly very pink because it's in cold water. And the pink one gets to be dark blue again because we put it in the hot water. You just keep going back and forth on that. Now, this one uh, is not a solution. These are actually gases. And we'll do the same thing. One that's hot, one that's cold. Okay. Now, the one that goes into the hot water, this is a tube containing gas, big glass tube, it becomes very dark. And the one that is in the cold water is very light. Now this NO2, that is smog. You're used to seeing that. Not as much in LA as we used to, <laughs> but if you've ever been to places like, say, Mexico City, Manila, Beijing, Mumbai, okay, very large amounts of smog, also especially when it's hot. So since it's going to the darker side, which is this brown NO2 gas, this time we can say that energy is a product and adding energy shifts it that way and removing energy shifts it this way. So that's Le Chatelier's principle in action, okay? And I do miss being able to show you these demonstrations actually in person. That's the fun part of being a chemistry teacher. Okay, now, let's answer some questions here, typical homework style questions. Here's an equilibrium system. What direction will the equilibrium shift to relieve the stress if we add N2? Well, if we add N2, we're putting in more reactant, that'll make more product. If we remove NH3, we're removing a product, it's going to Place what's removed to keep the equilibrium equal, okay? We remove H2, shifts back towards the reactants. Because we're removing a reactant, we want to replace what we've removed. Adding the catalyst has no effect on equilibrium. It lowers the activation energy, but it lowers it for the forward reaction and it lowers it for the reverse reaction. If we add heat, that goes back towards the reactants, because in this case, heat is a product, or as we say, exothermic reaction. Now, decreasing the volume can have an effect when you have gases involved. This is based on Avogadro's law. More volume favors more moles. Less volume favors less moles. So if I decrease the volume, it's going to favor the side with fewer moles. This has 1 plus 3, which is 4 moles of gas. This has 2 moles of gas, so decreasing the volume pushes that towards the right, towards the products. Okay. That same reaction we're talking about on the first page there. What direction will equilibrium shift? Okay. If we add carbon monoxide, that goes to the right, because it's reactant. Add water, goes to the right. Add carbon dioxide, well, that's actually a product, so that's going to shift it towards the reactants. If we remove hydrogen, we want to replace what we remove, it goes to the right. Remove carbon monoxide, replace what we remove, goes that way. We add a catalyst, no change. Now, interesting, the volume. Two moles of gas and, hey, two moles of gas. So since it's the same number of moles of gas on both sides, there will not be any actual effect this time by increasing.
single volume. Okay. Page four. I'm going to ask you the same question I just asked you. But instead of saying right or left, what happens to the concentration of H2? And here's H2 over here. It's a product. So if I add CO, we know it shifts it to the right. That means the concentration of H2 goes up. If I add water, it shifts to the right, makes more H2, it goes up. If I add carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide consumes H2, shift it to the left, it goes down. Now if I add, or sorry, if I remove hydrogen gas, this is going to replace what we remove. So it shifts to the right and it goes up. That's kind of a weird question. I remove it and it goes up a little bit. You kind of see where I'm going with it. If I remove CO, that shifts to the left, so H2 will go down, add in a catalyst, and increase the volume have no effect like they did before. So, here's the real question now. This is more what you'd have to think about. N2 plus 3H2, 2NH3, it's exothermic. Suggest ways to shift the equilibrium towards the left. Well, I can remove N2 or H2. That'll shift it to the left. I can add ammonia. That'll shift it to the left. I can heat it. That will shift it to the left. Okay. How about volume change? Let me increase volume. That will shift it to the left. Okay. That is Le Chatelier's principle for you folks. Sorry, we won't actually be able to do the lab. Let's see if I can figure out something online for that one. All right. Hope you're all having a good day. And this is Morgan signing off.